It's another edition of Our Town here on a Thursday morning at 9 a.m. You're listening to 94.9 and 99.1 The River. My name is Darren Swenson. Our Town, as always, brought to you by Decora Bank and Trust. Sixth guest and in five interviews on the program this morning. This uh, weekend is the start of shotgun deer season in the state of Iowa. We'll get what you need to know on that end of things with Troy Anderson from the Iowa Department of Natural Resources. Coming up this Saturday, the Wenashee County Historical Society will put on Dickens on Mill Street. Very unique event that they started last year and went well enough that they're doing it again this year. We'll have a conversation with Stacy Gosling and Elizabeth Lorenzen to discuss that event. This weekend is also Vesterheim's Norwegian Christmas celebration. Siobhan Marlowe will join us to chat with us and tell us about the goings-on at Vesterheim this weekend. A lot of stuff going on in Oshin this weekend and next weekend. And when things are happening in Oshin, we talk to our friend Clark Goltz. He'll tell us all about that. But we'll kick off uh, the show this morning with uh, Matt Marcella. He is the executive director of the West Union Chamber of Commerce. Tonight, it's Miracle on Vine Street. We'll talk about that event. We'll talk about the other uh, fun stuff happening in West Union Fayette County over the holiday season, uh, Matt will kick us off on the right foot. This is our town. It's brought to you by Decorah Bank and Trust, and you're listening to it on 94.9 and 99.1, The River. Coming up tonight in West Union, it's Miracle on Vine Street, and here to talk about that event, as well as uh, other events going on in the West Union area here in the holiday season, Matthew Marcella from the West Union Chamber. And uh, Matthew, uh, just touch on the event uh, coming up tonight, Miracle on Vine Street. Uh, love the creativity in the name, uh, first of all. Yeah, it's uh, it's a fantastic uh event that was uh born kind of out of uh trying to find something uh to bring the community in experience some of our local retailers here and uh really get them in the doors to see some of the unique products that our our local uh restaurants um coffee shops uh clothing stores boutiques all that sort of thing um something for the whole family but to really allow them to come in and purchase the the gifts that are just perfect for the ones in their lives. And give us a few more specifics about uh, what uh, this event uh, will uh, all entail, uh, when it will take place, uh, what opportunities that uh, folks have to uh, not only shop, but uh, perhaps uh, do other things. Yeah, uh, as you said, the the event is tonight. Uh, it's from 4.30 to 7.30 in the downtown West Union Uh the downtown courthouse square there uh, we've got quite a few businesses that are participating and each one is offering a different uh, family oriented event there uh, we have at uh, Tyndall shoes where we're doing a toy drive there uh, where the all the toys will go to the North Fayette Valley Community Coalition and they'll disperse those to uh, to families that are uh, less fortunate and in need um, we have Santa at Unique Memories, so there'll be a free will donation where they're raising money for the Open Hands Food Pantry, but they'll be able to sit down with Santa, take some photos, and uh, maybe get some of those items on the uh, the list checked off, and uh, hopefully they'll be under the Christmas tree waiting for them. Uh, U- Euphoria Coffee has Bad Boys Barbecue coming in, and uh, they're a fantastic local caterer that has just incredible barbecue and they'll have uh, uh ribs uh and a side uh and it's i've had them every time they've come through and it's just fantastic uh vine street boutique is doing uh, window decorations with the uh the kids there and then they'll also have uh another vendor that does um and i always get this wrong uh ma- macarons or macaroons uh, the really complicated uh, cookie dessert there that's just uh, incredible to eat, but very difficult to make. And they just do a fantastic job of it. Um, then we have uh, wagon rides downtown, which will be incredible. They'll uh, l- load up at the courthouse. Uh, Country View Dairy has uh, graciously donated the uh, the wagon and a, uh, a rider. Uh, alongside uh, another local who will have a wagon and we'll have rides going around the downtown and up to the West Union Festival of Lights. 
And then we'll have uh, Christmas carolers who will be going around uh, the downtown into the different businesses and they'll be made up of uh, community members and uh, hopefully uh, uh, quite a few kids involved this year with it. Uh, and then the last thing we have is uh, uh, cookie decorating and a silent auction over at Moonlight Stitching. Uh, the cookie decorating is for the kids. Uh, they'll be able to uh, to decorate their own cookies to either leave out for Santa or to, in all honesty, just gobble them right up there. Uh, and then uh, the silent auction has uh, quite a few different items in it, uh, such as uh, I've got a, uh, a beautiful Yeti cooler here. Ooh, which there is we go. Just fantastic. Uh, I've got uh, gift certificates for uh, waffle and coffee. I have um, hoodies, tickets to games, uh, sports uh, events, and then I have. Uh, two tickets to every grandstand event at the uh, 2024 Fayette County Fair. And they'll be able to bid on these items. And the proceeds are going to be uh, given out to the North Fayette Valley uh, Community Coalition, uh, as well as the Chamber. So we can continue to do events like this and bring the community in. And then uh, we'll have a downtown map of everything that's going on that people can pick up. And they stop by all the different events there. They get signatures and uh, they'll be entered into a, a drawing where they can win 25 bucks in, uh, in chamber dollars there that they can spend locally in the community. So it's just an incredible, incredible um, event for everybody. And there's something there for all ages. I know the word eclectic uh, goes uh, on uh, or gets described uh, or used as a description way too much, uh, but uh, that's the perfect description of tonight in my mind. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. We went up to every business, uh, you know, and asked them what they were interested in doing and got them involved. And, you know, everybody came together because this is just a great opportunity for people to get out, see their neighbors, their friends or family, get some holiday shopping done and uh, have some fun with the family in the process. And you touched on the important uh, part of uh, shopping. Obviously, shopping's easier than it uh, has been before. Uh, you and I are having this conversation via computer. Uh, you can do a lot of shopping for your computer, but if you want those unique, specialized gifts that uh, you can only get certain places, it's so important to shop local. And I'd imagine most of the uh, West Union businesses have that unique gift that uh, you just can't get anywhere else. Oh, absolutely. Uh, you know, you've had me on before and I, I've touched base that I've been, uh, I'm originally from Boston and uh, I, one could probably comfortably say that there's a lot out in Boston that you can get and do and see, but moving here, coming to Iowa and living in West Union, you know, I've seen things here and items that I know I'd never find if you gave me a hundred years out in Boston. So I really, uh, implore people to take advantage of the opportunity, come in here, see some of these fantastic retailers, these uh, small businesses, talk to the owners, have fun at the events, and, and really peruse what they have, because I guarantee you're going to find something special for the uh, someone special in your life. And you uh, touched on uh, the West Union Festival of Lights. Uh, why don't you touch on that a little bit and uh, maybe some other uh, holiday events uh, going on in the West Union area? Yeah, uh, so the uh, Festival of Lights is uh, just a fantastic, fantastic um, uh, offering that's uh, put together all by volunteers. And what they do is they go and decorate the uh, West Union uh, Rec Center. And you can go down there and drive through the, uh, the lights there and see just displays from all, every community member, community groups, businesses, uh, angels commemorating loved ones not with us anymore, new displays. I mean, it's just, it is incredible. They have hundreds of thousands of lights there where uh, it's just, it, it, they start every year during the summer, just putting together light displays, making sure everything works just to be able to kick it off for the holiday season. So it's a, a fantastic thing that opened up uh, right before Thanksgiving and will be going on uh, through the month of December here. And you can go down and visit that. But for real intimate approach, you'll be able to um, get a, a wagon ride down here at the, uh, the downtown and then take it all the way up there and just enjoy a nice uh, moonlit ride through the, uh, the lights there. And uh, that's just uh, 
one of the many fantastic things that are happening. I know that um, Elgin will have a uh, a winter walk uh, this Saturday or holiday um, uh, stroll through the woods there at uh, Gilbertson's. And uh, you'll be able to get some hot cocoa. There'll be a uh, holiday orchestra. And uh, I believe Santa will be up there as well. So that's a, a great opportunity. And then um, it's just, you know, it, I went for the first time last year and it just blows my mind how well these things are put together. I mean, the, the Elgin walk was incredible. It was lit with tea lights all the way up and they were uh, different colors and it was uh, just magical. I took my daughter and she was blown away as we walked through the woods and then kind of opened up into this roaring fire and she saw Santa and just lit up and we listened to some of the music and enjoyed the hot cocoa. So all sorts of things are going on uh, this holiday season in West Union and Fayette County. Uh, anything else uh, we're missing? Anything else you want to pass on uh, from the West Union and Fayette County uh, communities as long as uh, you got the forum this morning? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I uh, I could talk all day, but um, I think one of the final things that I'll, uh, I'll leave you with is that the, uh, the Fayette County Fair has uh, recently announced their uh, entertainment for the uh, – 2024 fair and they'll have kip moore uh headlining their major concert with uh larry fleet as a supporting act and that is on friday this year of the fair which would be the 26th so friday the 26th and uh july sorry uh they'll uh They'll have this fantastic concert and the tickets just went on sale and they can be found at the fair's Facebook page. They can be uh, picked up here at union land feed and uh, food market, as well as the old wine daily register. And uh, on Tuesday night of the fair, they're um, smaller, but just as popular concert um, that they instituted a few years ago this year, they have um, hairball. So I know that's a local favorite. It does a lot of the, uh, they, they cover a lot of the uh, classic rock and uh, that uh, genre. And every review, every person I've ever met who's ever seen them, I uh, can't wait to see them again. So I know that that's going to be an incredible, incredible uh, event. The fair does a great number of things like the uh, uh, school bus races, which are just unique to uh, uh unique to the area i mean every year you're watching two or three of these uh buses uh kind of roll over as they're going around the corners and they're just fighting for first place they've got a demo derby uh they've got the uh the traditional dirt track racing and then we'll have our queen contest and pie auction and carnival and all of our other great and wonderful events that are put on by you know uh, businesses in the uh the county community members and it's just it's a whole week of just awesome Honestly, it really is. And uh, with since we got our first uh, snowfall this week, uh, always good to uh, talk about uh, county fairs to warm the heart up a little bit, uh, at least yes. from a uh, temperature perspective. Uh, Matthew, I appreciate you uh, taking the time telling us about Miracle on Vine Street and everything else uh, great going on in uh, West Union and Fayette County. Thanks for uh, taking the time, as always, and uh, have yourself and uh, your to you and your family, uh, have yourself a, a great holiday season. You as well. Thank you. Matthew Marcella from the West Union Chamber, Miracle on Vine Street, 4.30 to 7.30 tonight. Well, it's the holiday season, and uh, always good to uh, talk to a guy that maybe looks like St. Nicholas a little bit, with all due respect. Clark Goltz, uh, he is uh, in the... He is from the uh, city of Oshin, and when there's stuff going on in Oshin, we talk to our friend... Clark Goltz, uh, do you have your list uh, checking whether people are naughty or nice, Mr. Goltz? I have a lot of lists, and on the one that says naughty, you're one of the top names on that list, Darren. Stop it. You're making me blush. You should. You should. No, I'm one of the guys they talk to and, and set up things uh, around the big city of Ashen. Well, and uh, obviously a lot of stuff going on over the next uh, couple of weekends, and this weekend... The Magic of Christmas is uh, going to be on display in Ashen. Tell us everything that's uh, going to be going on this weekend. You know, that is a great event. It's, it's been in the works and been in Ashen for, you know, well over a decade. And it starts with just a Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, usually the first weekend of December. 
And it starts with a gala out at the Silver Springs Golf Course at 6 o'clock at night. You can come up and see, uh, get a great, lot of great food, get to see tables, get to see trees, do some wine tasting. That's how it starts on a Friday night from 6 to 8. And it continues on Saturday. It does. On Saturday, it's again, that's when the home tours start. We have five different homes this year that they can tour and see, all decorated for the holiday around the Ashton area. Those are on Saturday and Sunday. And again, when they come on Saturday, they can go and see the trees and the tables and the collections. And then there's also a special soup and salad and dessert luncheon on Saturday from 11 to 2 at Silver Springs Golf and Country Club. And finally on Sunday, yes. come right after church. That's when you get homemade cinnamon rolls and, and some coffee or juice. And then again, go on some home tours that morning and late afternoon. And again, see tables, trees, and other collections. It's a three-day event. And I know uh, you mentioned this uh, event has been going on for uh, about a decade or so. I know uh, it was one of my mom's uh, favorite events uh, when uh, she was alive. And uh, what has kept this uh, event going? Well, actually, the thing that keeps it going are several things. One is the volunteers that really help support this kind of project. Secondly, it's that people open up their homes for the home tours. And finally, it's just it's become a tradition. It's the same weekend as Christmas at Luther. And then when you get done with that, you run over to Ashen and you take part in the magic of Christmas. And uh, where can uh, people uh, find out uh, where the homes uh, are that they can tour? That is all on uh, uh, the website, and um, you can just go to uh, um, St. Francis de Sales Church and go on their website and find it. Otherwise, what they need to do is come out to the golf course, and we'll get them tickets. And on the tickets, it has a list of the homes, the addresses for GPS, and they're ready to roll. And uh, what are what is the admission cost to participate in all the fun this weekend? Okay, so most of it is right at $10. It's $10 for the gala. It's $10 for the luncheon. It's $10 to go around and see the, the home tours as well. So bring your money, bring your friends. And uh, I guess it's going to be pretty nice for the weekend. So we're pretty lucky. Yeah, temperatures uh, in the high 30s, uh, sunshine. Yeah. Uh, make sure you get your sunglasses on when you're traveling around on uh, Saturday afternoon and Sunday afternoon. But we can't stop well, with just one weekend no. uh, here no, in wait, wait, uh, wait, wait, this wait, weekend. Wait, 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 just a second. Before we leave this weekend, we also have Time out. Santa Land. Yeah. Did you almost forget, Darren, Santa Land on Saturday, December 2nd, down at the community center. That's from 11 o'clock in the morning to 1 o'clock in the afternoon. Santa and Mrs. Claus are going to be there handing out treats for kids and also photo opportunities with Santa. So that's just another little addition to this Saturday and on Saturday, there's also a craft show at the Ashen Lutheran Church that goes on as well. So we got a lot of things going on just this weekend in Ashen. And being the fact I forgot that, is that part of the reason I'm on the naughty list? Well, that's why you're near the top. I have others, but I won't reveal those names on the radio. Okay, fair enough. Yeah. But we can't stop the fun with just one weekend in the holiday season in Ashen. More stuff going on next week as well. What do you got up your sleeve besides big muscles there? Wow, let me tell you something. We are really lucky again this year. We have the Canadian Pacific Kansas City holiday train coming through Austin on Friday, December 8th. And again, that is a free event. It's at 11 o'clock, uh, right, right in the middle of the day there. And you can go just to one block north of downtown Ashen, near the railroad tracks in the city park over there, and see the holiday train coming in. And tell us about that holiday train. What does that all entail? Uh, and it its arrival uh, benefits uh, those uh, less fortunate uh, this holiday season, and uh, you can definitely help out uh, those less fortunate by its arrival. Explain uh, what, what's going on, everything with the train. You are exactly right. And the big thing that that does is we ask people who come down to see the train, not only to get to see the train and, and see the entertainment. And again, Santa and Mrs. Claus will be there, but it's an opportunity to give back to people in our community who need it. All the proceeds that get come in from the holiday train go to the greater area pantry called Gap in, in uh, Calmer. And what we ask people to bring is a non-perishable food item, or they can actually bring a monetary donation. And we collect those at that site and we make sure it gets distributed to people in need around the area. What a great idea. What a great entertainment uh, 
opportunity and uh, helping out those less fortunate. Uh, they you can't really get any better than that uh, during the holiday season, can you? I agree, Darren. In fact, they estimate eighty households help are helped each week at the uh, greater area pantry out of Kelmer, which is 125 to 140 individuals. So it's a lot of people who gain from the donations that come in that day. We've invited all the school kids to come down as well. So it's going to really be a fun afternoon or fun late morning, I guess. And that should be uh, fun as uh, well. Anything else uh, going on? I better ask before I forget anything else. Hopefully that moves me down the naughty list a little bit. Well, there is one other item you forgot, and that is a reminder to bring me my Christmas gift, Darren, from you. I think a couple times. Yeah, I haven't gotten your list yet. I haven't gotten your list. Okay. Hey, you know what? There is a letter to Santa box outside of the community center in Ashen. If somebody drops those in, I know Santa gets those and responds to them as long as there's an address on there. So when you go through Ashen here and drop in your letter, you might get one back. All right. Uh, okay. Anything uh, Anything we're missing? Oh, yeah. Anything else you want to pass on uh, besides warm holiday greetings? I think that would be great. We'll just see you in Ashen this weekend, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, December 1st through 3rd for the Magic of Christmas and the uh, Santa Land and the Ashen Lutheran Church Craft Sale. And then the following weekend on Saturday, December 2nd, we'll see you at um, the December 8th, excuse me. We'll see you at the Holiday Train in downtown Ashen. All right, uh, Clark, uh, good catching up with you with uh, everything that's going on in the uh, city of Ashen over the next uh, couple of weekends related to holiday activities. Uh, thanks for uh, the time. Thanks for the uh, catch up. And... Happy holiday seasons to uh, you and your family. You as well, Darren. Thank you. Clark Goltz uh, from the city of Ashton. Uh, Magic of Christmas this weekend. Santa Land this, this weekend. Craft Sale this weekend. And the uh, Pacific Holiday Train next week in Ashton. Fun time of year uh, as the holiday season getting nearer and nearer. And one of the fun events uh, in the core area of the holiday season is the Vesterheim Norwegian Christmas Celebration. It will take place uh, this Saturday. And Siobhan Marlowe joining us from Vesterheim. And Siobhan, uh, just tell us about the uh, day in general. Uh, a plethora of activities and a heck of a lot of fun uh, based on uh, what I'm seeing on uh, my list here. It is. It's going to be a great, great day. It's December 2nd, of course, which is this coming Saturday. And the event runs from 10 until 4. And we have all sorts of things happening. Um, once again, we'll have live goats. And I believe those are from 11 until 3. And you can come um, pet the goats and have your picture taken with them. If you get hungry, you can um, be out on the back patio of the new Commons building. We will have coffee and hot cider, and then people can come sample some lefsa or make a Scandinavian s'more over the fire. And the Scandinavian s'more differs from um, the American s'more in that it's made with a ginger snap instead of a graham cracker. And oh, we'll be that toasting the marshmallows. Yeah, toasting the marshmallows out back behind the commons. And, um, uh, and it looks like it's going to be a, a reasonably nice day as of right now. It says sunny and uh, 39 uh, that's a good day for uh, cider and uh, Scandinavian s'mores. And uh, you can sit outside without being uncomfortable. Right. I'm keeping my fingers crossed. Last year last year was a little bit chilly. <laughs> this year we're hoping it's better. Um, we'll also have the Nordic dancers selling cookies outside. They'll be between the museum and the Dayton House on Water Street. And the um, Norman Borlaug Association will be selling Yule Necks, which are the sheaves of wheat which were brought in um, after the wheat harvest in Norway and brought in to sort of celebrate the season's harvest. And it looks like uh, you got a, quite a bit of uh, music uh, on Saturday, which is always a big part of this event, correct? It is. We've got a great music lineup. Um, at 1030 in Bethania Church, there will be Northern Lights. At 11, the Decorah Chorale. And then at 1130, the high school Madrigal Singers are going to be um, singing in the again in the church. And then we switch over um, to the ship gallery and we'll have a group called A Touch of Brass playing in the ship gallery in the museum. And then at one o'clock back in the church, we'll have um, the Lauren Singing Society. So we've got a great lineup of music and we're really excited about that. We'll also have um, 
We're going to have some other visitors at the museum. We'll have some junior Nissa running about playing pranks. So keep your eyes open for them. And we'll also have some Eula Buckers who um, sort of celebrate the season by dressing up, going door to door, knocking and trying to make people guess who they are. They can be a little bit scary. They may be carrying a wooden goat's head on a stick, um, but they're lots of fun to have around. So if you see them, poke them and ask them who they are. All sorts of uh, fun and maybe a mysterious uh, sort of way coming up on uh, Saturday. And of course, uh, folk art demonstrations, a big part of uh, what Vesterheim does, uh, not only this time of year, but year round. And that's uh, going to be a part of the day on uh, Saturday. Uh, discuss uh, what's happening on that end of things. We've got some great demonstrators. We have people rose mauling. We have people carving. We'll have people doing some lucid work with yarn. We'll have, um, oh, uh, the, the kids club, the kids whittling club will be uh, carving in the commons. Uh, many of them will be in the museum as well. We'll also have people making hardanger lace. And in the music, I forgot to mention that Eden Aim from Decora is going to be wandering the museum and the commons in the afternoon. And she's always a lot of fun to hear as well. And if you want to do some holiday uh, shopping, I know uh, the event uh, of Norwegian uh, Christmas celebration is 10 until 4, but the uh, museum uh, store open a little longer than that on Saturday, correct? It is. It is open from nine until five and they have some amazing and beautiful items in the museum store there's just some really gorgeous gorgeous things in there so feel free to stop in there might also be a few of the demonstrators who have some things for sale um then we might have some um, some knitted goods and some uh straw ornaments for sale as well and as for uh, admission on uh, Saturday for all of these events, uh, what do you uh, people need to know on that end of things? Admission for adults is $12. For seniors, it's $10. For anybody under 18, it's free all day. So kids can come in free. Um, and also for kids, we have a number of crafts that they can come and make and take home with them. They can make mini Yule necks, the little sheaves of wheat. And of course, we it isn't Christmas without the heart basket. And they can come learn how to weave a heart basket and take it home with them, put it on their tree. Um, also, we have the little yarn Nissa that are so much fun to have. And those are great tree decorations as well. And then we'll have some snowflakes. Kids can come in and cut snowflakes and paste them on their windows at home. Looks like you're already prepared uh, there, Siobhan. <laughs> I try. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. Uh, anything that we're missing, anything else uh, folks need to uh, keep in mind, uh, not only about this weekend or uh, anything else uh, going on at Vesterheim right now? Well, we have a lot of, um, just a lot of traditional Christmas decorations in the museum right now, and we'd love to have people stop and see them. Um, we have our... Currently, we are under winter hours, so the museum hours are 10 to 4 instead of 9 to 5, like in the spring and summer. Um, but we're always happy to see people. And if you would like a tour of the museum ever, um, just to please contact me, and you can do that through the museum's website. All right. Uh, we appreciate you taking some time telling us about uh, the Norwegian Christmas uh, celebration. Always a fun day at Vesterheim uh, this coming uh, Saturday, Siobhan. Appreciate uh, you taking the time. Uh, thanks for uh, every, you and everybody uh, for what they provide the community at Vesterheim. And uh, happy uh, holiday season uh, to you and your family. Thanks, Darren. Happy holidays to you as well. Javon Marlowe from Vesterheim, a Norwegian American Museum, the Norwegian Christmas celebration coming up this Saturday from 10 a.m. until 4 p.m. Coming up this Saturday, it is the second annual Dickens on Mill Street, uh, the event being put on by the Wanashi County Historical Society. And two guests uh, here to talk about the uh, program, Elizabeth Lorenzen and Stacy Gosling. And Elizabeth, uh, let's start with you, uh, because uh, off the air, uh, you just uh, told me the story of uh, how you got to experience a similar event uh, when you're uh, out uh, visiting uh, your daughter and how that kind of helped uh, this event uh, come to be uh, last year. Tell us about that. Okay. Um, we had 
uh, over Thanksgiving, we went to Skinny Atlas, New York. Our daughter lived in upstate New York in Ithaca. And they had a wonderful Dickens celebration. They had a lot of the same things we're trying to do here. Dickens characters, by the way, Larry Berland is Scrooge and Ed Epperly is Jacob Marley. So um, if you want to come and hear about them or hear them perform, uh, they will be there on Saturday. But um, just knowing, having worked at the Historical Society, both Stacy and I were aware that there is a lot, there were a lot of English that really helped settle Decorah. And the Scandinavians were not the force that they are now. Um, the English came here with their money and their expertise. We were the Western frontier in 1849. So um, we thought it would be good to include uh, uh, some things about the English because they did a lot of the businesses, established a lot of the businesses, did a lot of the houses, buildings downtown um, initially. And Stacy actually had her own experience with Dickens. And uh, Stacy, uh, Elizabeth, uh, put it on the tee for you. Uh, tell us about uh, your experience uh, with this event. So growing up in Texas, in Galveston, they have Dickens on the Strand. And this year is actually their 50th year wow. of doing it. And, you know, I thought with all the English, you know, that had been here, why can't we do that? It's something completely different that nobody else is doing. You know, why can't we do that on, you know, the same weekend that so many things are going on just to add another option of, an activity for families to do. And Elizabeth, uh, you just touched on uh, how the English uh, were key in uh, the settlement of uh, Decorah. I mean, I remember uh, talking to Stacy about this event uh, last year. Uh, I mean, as a pretty much uh, full-time uh, Decorah resident for over 40 years, uh, I was unaware of a lot of this thing. Uh, are you finding as you uh, tell that story that uh, many others are kind of unaware of uh where the uh, settlers of this town uh, really came from? Yes. In fact, last year, as a lot of people came through, and it, it was people that also who've been here in Decorah for a lot of years, said, I had no idea. And so it is really interesting. And we have a number of uh, British expats here in Decorah. So um, we basically got them involved. I went and talked to Brian Betteridge, who told me what it was like to grow up in England. He was a resident, his family were residents of Wimbledon in England. Yeah, and um, <clears throat> a lot of the traditions that they had were ones that I'd read about that the English did. In fact, um, Mrs. Landers has a recipe for suet pudding <laughs> And yeah, that's a very British thing, but um, it's also known as plum pudding. Uh, and it has to do with uh, the baking process, uh, produces lots of holes in the, the plum pudding. And it, it's a very vital part. But Brian was so good at explaining how that worked and the things that his own family had done, um, really. And Margaret, too, really has... Uh, tried to celebrate the the English Christmas at their home. So it was really an eye-opener for me, too. And uh, Stacy, uh, this uh, event uh, got off the ground last year. It's one thing to get an event like this off the ground. It's uh, another thing to keep this event uh, sustainable. And you've uh, got it to a, a second year. Uh, what uh, what got it off the ground uh, last year? I guess we've touched on a little bit of that, uh, but uh, what's going to make it uh, even uh, bigger and better this year? Um, I guess part of it is one of the things that everybody always asks when they come to the Historical Society house is they want to see the front part of the house. Um, but um, up until this fall, it was being rented. There was a renter there. Uh, and he actually, the person that was renting, he bought a house, uh, here in town. So when he moved out, the board said, you know, 
let's try it. Let's try for a year, see if we can raise enough money to replace the rent um, and open the house, you know, so we can actually show people the front. So last year, you know, Elizabeth and I on um, Friday night, bef- the night before Dickens, we were like, gosh, I hope somebody comes. Well, the house was packed, absolutely packed with people. Um, it was absolutely wonderful. And this year we will have the front part of the house as well. So we will have more room, uh, more room to spread out. Uh, we have displays about the English um, all on the first floor. So yeah, we've had, we always get people that say, what about the front part of the house? So now this is sort of the grand opening for the front part of the house to the public. And uh, Elizabeth, uh, tell us, uh, I know Stacy uh, touched on a few of the details that will take place uh, this coming Saturday. Tell us about uh, other things that will be a part of this event uh, coming up on Saturday. Okay, one thing that uh, happened in Skinny Atlas was that they had horse-drawn carriage rides. And that really... Um, seemed to be something that was very popular last year. Um, When you think about it, back in 1860, when this house was built that we now occupy with the Historical Society, the mode of transportation was horsepower, real horsepower, and wheeled vehicles. And you can imagine yourself going down Broadway um, and how it must have been back then. So um, that's one of the the major fun things. And we have a member who has an antique sleigh, which we will put out front. Carlton, I hope you're listening. Mm-hmm. And we will, if people can have opportunities to take their photo with that. Um, inside, we will have uh, food that uh, the English consume at Christmas time and other times, uh, lemon curd tarts, mincemeat tarts. Denise Lana is making those for us. She and she is actually doing it with meat. Not always do they put meat in minced meat. Um, we have other traditional things. Uh, we have a game for kids that come. Uh, we, we have a list of the Dickens characters, and if they can get uh, the Dickens characters to initial uh, their sheet, then uh, we have a gift for them. Um, it's a kind of a Christmas sack with an English cracker. And I don't know if you know what those are. They they look like a firecracker and you pull from both ends and there are little gifts inside and a joke and a hat that you can put on. So that will, if they can find all of the Dickens characters, that will be something that they will get. Um, Stacy, how about other things that I'm forgetting? Um, we have a brass quartet, um, that will be playing, uh, during, during the afternoon. Uh, and this year, because it was so packed last year, they sort of got squished into one window, um, bay window. But this year, because we have more room, they will have, um, room to spread out so they won't have to sit on the windowsills. Hmm. Um, So, and um, a group of people will be uh, walking around doing Christmas carols as well. And Elizabeth, I know uh, you mentioned this is at the Historical Society uh, house, and I think uh, probably most people know where it is. But uh, for those that are uh, perhaps unfamiliar, where is this house located? Um, Our address that where they will enter is 302 South Mill Street. And I always tell people it's Kitty Corner from the Brick House, Kitty Corner from First Lutheran. So it's at the corner of Broadway and Mill Streets, or West Broadway, I should say. And then they will get to exit through 509, which is the address out front on Broadway. Um, but at, if they tour the lower part of the house, the new we call it the new part, but um, the ones that the one that's now open, um, they will exit onto Broadway. So, and, and Stacy, what are the hours for this event uh, coming up on Saturday? And uh, is there any admission charge? Um, no, there is no admission charge. Um, it's free to the public. Uh, the horse-drawn carriage rides that is five dollars a person. 
Um, and it is from 1 to 4 p.m. this Saturday. And uh, Dickens on Mill Street uh, coming up this Saturday. And I know this is an event uh, that uh, the Historical Society is putting on. But uh, let's take a step back and uh, look at uh, your mission uh, from the Historical Society, Elizabeth, uh, in the big picture. Uh, tell us uh, what the Historical Society's mission uh, is all about. And uh, Stacia, you can add at the end of this as well. And uh, tell us uh, some of the things that uh, you're involved with in uh, keeping uh, the history of Wenatchee County alive? Well, we have a substantial archive. Um, and so what we do, our mission is to preserve the history of Wenatchee County. It isn't just a core, it's definitely because we have all sorts of ethnic contributions around the county. Um, the material things, the letters, um, the the books that have been written about Winnesheet County, those kinds of information that could be lost uh, if we didn't preserve it. So that's major is that we have a very extensive archive. Um, we have the newspapers online. The Historical Society collaborated with Luther College um, several years ago to put all of the newspapers from uh, Decora, Calmer, um, and just this year, um, a an anonymous donation allowed the Ashen B to be put on there too. So um, that's really, and that's something you can access twenty four seven at home. We'd be happy to provide people with the the internet address if they would like to do that. But um, save the stories, the family histories. Um, we do have this, as Stacy mentioned, we're hoping to do exhibits now throughout the year that take this archive and put it out for the public. There are some very fascinating uh, things that one of the things that's happening on Saturday is we have a beaded bag that belonged to Winnie, uh, who was the daughter of the original owners and then was passed down to Helen uh, who was her daughter, who was passed down and then passed down to her granddaughter. And so that's there. There are some high-topped, good good shoes, heeled shoes that were worn by a member of the Adams, um, and the, excuse me, Landers Adams family. Um, so just things like that. Um, one picture's worth a thousand words. That takes you back to how this house looked at the beginning. And it's, it's interesting to note, um, you know, Broadway is so built up, but when the Landerses built that house in 1860, there was no First Lutheran Church. They were meeting in a log house um, that was sort of located toward the, the alley behind on Mill Street. So again, um, what we want to do is help people understand what it looked like and some of the history. And then that history is happening right now because um, I did a class in the summer with uh, 10 to 12 year olds, um, how to be an architecture detective. And so that helps them to appreciate these houses are a living history as you walk up and down Broadway and through the rest of Decorah. I'm sorry, Stacy. I'm sure I've left something out, but add to it. <laughs> um, just, you know, the, the Historical Society, we're really trying to, um, to get the public more aware of, you know, what we do. Uh, we do have, you know, a large archive full of things. And now, you know, this year with being able to do some pop-up displays, um, people will be able to see some of the the things from long ago that were, you know, belonged to people that were right here. You know, we have civil war letters from different families. Um, uh, we have a, a, a saddle that was from a sheriff that had originally, it came, I think, from Texas, but the man was a sheriff here. Um, and somebody had been dragged to death on the saddle so the guy thought it was haunted so you know he didn't want it um just lots of very cool interesting items that i don't think people realize that we do have 
but this year is going to be um it's an important year that we need to get the public um behind us because we don't have a renter anymore um so you know we do we do need financial uh donations so that we can continue to do that we've worked with um the the middle school uh, they came, they have come a couple of different times and looked at different things that we've had on display. Uh, and a lot of kids uh, are absolutely fascinated, like that Water Street is named Water Street because the water actually, the river came right up behind Water Street. Um, it came right up to the backs of some of those buildings. And of course, they can't imagine that. But when they see it on a map, they're like, wait. Is that why it's called Water Street? Yep, that's why it's called Water Street. So really just getting out, you know, the information. And like Elizabeth said, it's not just Decorah, it's all of Winnesha County. Um, and we encourage anybody, you know, that has artifacts or anything to, you know, give us a call or stop by, come see what we do. Uh, we do a lot of um, help with people with their family genealogies also. Because uh, the two kind of tie in together, you know, they want to know, you know, well, where exactly did my three times great grandparents live? You know, we have old plat maps that we can, you know, narrow it down and figure out where the where their families had lived. So, you know, Elizabeth, if uh, folks uh, want to uh, make a financial contribution to uh, help you guys uh, fulfill your mission, now, how do they do so? Um, They. They can send it in um, to P.O. Box 63, uh, Historical Society, Winnishi County Historical Society, P.O. Box 63, Decorah. Um, or it would be really fun to have them come in. We love to show off the house and also help people access, if they're a little reticent to uh, look at the newspapers online, come in with a question. We love to solve mysteries. That's exactly what we do here. And I know my husband asked me, why do you like that so much? I said, because every time I go to volunteer, you know, somebody comes in and they need an answer. And if we can help them find it, it's very gratifying. And that history won't be lost then. So and Stacy, I'll close out with you. Uh, anything we're missing? Anything uh, you, else you want to pass on about uh, the mission of the Historical Society or the Dickens on a Mill Street event uh, coming up this Saturday? Or um, I'll let you give uh, one final invitation for folks to come on Saturday. Yes, we invite everyone. It is family fr friendly and we encourage everybody to come out. You know, even, even if you aren't, you know, a history nut, it's still extremely interesting um, to come and see the house. It is, you know, the front part of the house is was built pre-Civil War, um, which is kind of hard for some people to wrap their brain around, but it was put up in 1860. Um, so yes, we encourage anybody and everybody come out and see what we're about. All right. Uh, obviously, uh, based on this conversation, and I knew uh, beforehand, uh, you two and uh, everybody else involved in the Historical Society, very passionate about uh, history, passionate about uh, keeping that history alive, which is uh, so important uh, because uh, as, uh, if you don't keep it alive, it's uh, going to get forgotten. And uh, mm -hmm. that's not a good thing. But uh, Elizabeth and Stacy, thanks for uh, taking the time. Best of luck with the event uh, coming up this weekend and a uh, happy holiday season to uh, you and your families. Yes, yes you thank do. you so much, Darren. Same to you. <laughs> Elizabeth Lorenzen and uh, Stacey Gosling from the Winnishi County Historical Society. Dickens on Mill Street coming up this Saturday from 1 until 4. Shotgun deer uh, season uh, begins this weekend and here to uh, discuss uh, what you need to do to uh, get ready for the weekend and uh, what you need to do uh, once you uh, head out into the fields this weekend is Troy Anderson with the Iowa DNR and Troy, before uh, folks get ready for the uh, hunts uh, this weekend, what are some uh, things that should be on folks' uh, checklist to make sure that they have prior to uh, heading out on Saturday? Yeah, so yeah, as you as you bring up, just around the corner is uh, Iowa's most popular uh, seasons, um, deer, gun, one, and two, um, where over 100,000 hunters will be taken to the fields and uh and woods um and and in the next 
in those 14 days, uh, over 50% of the Iowa total harvest for deer will take place, which is an important role um, in population management. So yeah, there's there's a lot of things um, to, to check off the list, uh, getting your licenses early. Um, it's always a it's always a good thing. Some folks like to wait, see what the weather is like. Looks like it's going to be fairly nice mid mid to upper 30s um, this weekend. So it should be pretty decent for deer hunting. Um, gun safety, you know, being safe is kind of the, the most important thing. Um, you know, your basic hunter safety lessons, uh, treat every gun as if, as if it were loaded. Um, unload a gun if you're going to climb a tree or a fence or, you know, um, get into a vehicle. Um, never point at anything that you don't intend to shoot. Um, wear plenty of blaze orange. Now, the, the minimum in Iowa requirement for, for deer hunting is a solid blaze orange vest, shirt, or jacket. But if you throw a hat on there, uh, it just makes you more visible. So plenty of blaze orange. Uh, wear plenty of clothes. Like I said, it's, it's not going to be overly warm or overly cold, but being comfortable out there um it, you know is also helpful so um yeah have, you know enjoy your time with friends and family um all that sort of thing makes for a much better hunt and just to clarify when does season one uh, run and when does season two run yeah yeah uh good uh good question there deer gun season one starts december 2nd and runs through the 6th and uh, then there's a slight break and the second season starts December 9th and runs through the 17th. So 14 days in total over the couple of weeks there in December. When it comes to a, from a licensing perspective, uh, will the license cover both seasons or is there anything different folks need to do if they're doing season one as compared to season two? Um, no. So there, there are two different seasons. The only case is a, a landowner tenant. Uh, a landowner or tenant license can extend into either season until it's filled, that type of thing. But otherwise, yeah, gun one and gun two are separate seasons, need separate licensing. And I know we have a little bit of a snow cover on the ground this weekend. Uh, Mother Nature may take care of it uh, by this weekend, but let's say there's still some snow cover uh, coming out on Saturday. Does that uh, lead to uh, easier conditions? Does that uh, affect uh, the hunt at all? Yeah, so that's that's a good question. Um, historically, the numbers have shown that actually when the conditions are brown, more deer are harvested. Now that's variable on maybe the weather conditions are really poor and not as many people get out. Um, obviously, it's a little easier to track deer, um, trail deer, blood trail deer, if if there's a little snow on the ground, a little easier to, to, to you know, deer are a little more visible also. Sometimes you get the slippery conditions and then it's hard to get around for for folks so then that limits you know where they can access and how many people are out there too so but yeah i think there'll be good conditions if there's a little skiff of snow certainly wouldn't hurt if it's not there maybe uh the conditions getting around um out in the fields and stuff will be a little easier so of course one of the issues that uh, the dnr has uh, tried to uh, stay out in front of as well as you possibly can is chronic wasting disease uh when it comes to uh, the collections, the samples, uh, et cetera, related to CWD, uh, are there any th is there anything new in place uh, this year, or is it pretty much uh, standard what you've been these last couple of years? Yeah, it's pretty pretty close to what we've been doing. Pretty standard. Um, the quotas um, actually in this region stay the same, and all of this stuff can be you know checked on our Iowa DNR website. They can see where the quotas are at. Um, we have a list of the Dropbox freezers, which are the same as last year. Um, you know, one in the Decora Fish Hatchery, one in Elgin at Gilbertson Nature Center, one in um, El Cater at Osborne Nature Center, and one at the Harpers Ferry uh, Boat Ramp, State Boat Ramp. So those are all the same. More information on the website, obviously, if you're looking for a phone number to call. We will be out sampling, um, especially this these next couple of weeks until our quotas are full. Um, as far as expansion, really haven't seen a lot of expansion, but there has been a few counties that have popped up um, over the last couple of years um, out of this region, but, you know, showing C CWD. So 
it's always a concern. It's not going away, but it seems like it's been a slow spread. So, and I know uh, recently uh, Minnesota's area of uh, chronic wasting disease monitoring has been expanded a little bit. I believe they found some uh, up by the Wabasha area just recently. When it comes to the management of CWD, uh, does the Iowa DNR coordinate with Wisconsin, Minnesota officials? Just because I'd imagine it's one of those uh, deals that uh, state state lines really don't matter when it comes to uh, CWD. Is that a fair statement? Yeah, yeah. State lines and even the Mississippi River aren't much of a border when it comes to deer movement. Um, yes, um, we have folks that are on a board, a CWD uh, group of folks, and they do meet regularly with multiple states and kind of see what everybody else is doing. So we're we're not trying to reinvent the wheel, so to speak. Um, yeah, and we've run into the same thing where, um, you know, a county that hadn't had it hops and then, you know, our management or our surveillance will change a little bit, a little heavier surveillance, just more sampling in that area to see, you know, what what we're actually dealing with. So based on the fact that you haven't really expanded it uh, here in the state of Iowa, do you feel at least a knock on wood uh, that the management and the control of it uh, is going well to this point? Yeah, I, I would say the spread is slow, but you just really it's really hard to tell. It can it can kind of show up in spots where you didn't expect it. Obviously, where we've had it for a number of years in Almakee County, that has expanded slightly over the years. Um, but yeah, there's sometimes there's a county that will pop up in the middle of the state, which happened last year, and uh, <laughs> don't quite know why, but uh, that's what the surveillance is for. So, Anything else the uh, public needs to know as uh, shotgun deer season one starts on Saturday? No, I think we covered covered a lot. Uh, you know, main thing is to go out and have fun, um, be safe, and enjoy the tradition and time with friends and family, and try to fill your freezer with some Iowa venison. All right, uh, Troy, we appreciate uh, you taking the time telling us uh, everything we need to know about uh, shotgun deer season uh, starting this weekend. Appreciate the uh, time, and uh, have yourself a, a great hunting season and uh, holiday season. Thanks, Aaron. Troy Anderson with the Iowa DNR. A Munga Tech to our guest on the program this morning, Matt Marcella. He is the executive director of the West Union Chamber of Commerce. Uh, Miracle on Vine Street, 430 to 730 tonight. Uh, the West Union Celebration of Life Lights. All sorts of other uh, celebrations going on in Fayette County this holiday season. Clark Goltz, uh, Magic of Christmas uh, this weekend. Uh, Pacific uh, Holiday Train coming up next weekend craft show coming up this weekend in Ashen, all sorts of other events. We thank him for joining us. Vesterheim Norwegian American uh, Christmas uh, celebration uh, this weekend. Siobhan Marlowe with uh, Vesterheim joined us. Dickens on Mill Street, that'll be a fun one. Uh, sources say our colleague Janelle uh, Halverson will be a part of that event as well. I want to thank Elizabeth Lorenzen and uh, Stacy Gosling for joining us on that end of things. And, of course, uh, shotgun deer season, uh, family tradition, a uh, gathering tradition uh, for many uh, people in the uh, state of Iowa. Have a great uh, hunt uh, this weekend and stay safe. Uh, we want to thank uh, Troy Anderson for joining us on that subject. Each and every week we put these shows on YouTube. We realize you're busy. Can't always be near a smart speaker or a radio or what have you. At 9 o'clock on a Thursday morning, we want to bring these shows to you on your schedule. If you're out on YouTube, 11-30 Our Town program, that's a great way to figure it out. And we also put these links up on all of our Facebook pages as well. Another way we do our best to uh, stay in touch with you, the public, at LA Communications. Thank you to our guest. Thanks to Decor of Ank and Trust our sponsor. And thank you. That's right. You for tuning in, for logging on or for watching our town on 94.9 and 99.1 the river.